Hi guys, I'm there again yet with an explanation of a simple concept with the help of our animation series. Now this video is going to be all about understanding the difference between the organophosphate and the carbamate poisoning. Let's try to recap it first. This is the presence of the normal acetylcholinesterase enzyme. It is having the presence of an ester site. It is having the presence of an anionic site over there down. Now the molecule acetylcholine is going to come in contact with the enzyme and it is going to get attached at the esteritic site and boom what does happen there is going to be hydrolysis of the acetylcholine this makes acetylcholine an example of a shock acting molecule in the body in the first situation when a person is going to be having an organophosphate poisoning did you see that the organophosphates are molecules which are going to attach themselves at the esteritic site since they attach themselves at the esteritic site so now the hydrolysis of acetylcholine cannot take place. We therefore have symptoms associated with the overactivity of acetylcholine. What do we do? One, we can give a drug which can antagonize the action of the excessive amount of acetylcholine and that would be, very right, you know that, atropine. And the second is enzyme activators. Now enzyme activators are drugs like the oxynes, pralidoxine and diacetylmonoxine these are drugs which will attach themselves at the anionic site. They form a bond with the organophosphate molecule and you see over there, they are going to be responsible for taking the organophosphate away. So the oxyme organophosphate complex leaves the enzyme which makes the enzyme just like the normal enzyme again available for the hydrolysis of acetylcholine. Compare this with what is likely to happen in an individual who has suffered from carbamate poisoning. Carbamates are going to be different from organophosphates because they are going to attach themselves at the esteritic site as well as at the anionic site. So point number one, they are going to prevent the hydrolysis of acetylcholine just like organophosphates. We would again have therefore symptoms associated with acetylcholine overactivity. But wait, since they attach themselves with the anionic site, do you think the oxymes can be effective? And the answer is obviously, oxymes do not have an attachment site available over here with the enzyme. Therefore, the oxymes are not going to be working with respect to a carbamate poisoning. How do we save the life of the patient then? Of course, there is an acetylcholine overactivity. So the earlier drug atropine, which was the drug of choice for organophosphate poisoning, is also going to be effective for the carbamate poisoning as well. Hope the simple effort of ours helps you to understand the differentials between the organophosphate and the carbamate poisoning really well.